cut this special preacher loose this morning. Uh, let me let me let me brag on a couple just for a little bit. All right, we got Sullivan, right? Did I pronounce it right? And we got Farage. Did I pronounce it right? Say yes, even if I didn't. Make the old man feel good. Okay, Elena, stand up for a minute. This is Mama back here, Woo! and uh, it is, it's so good to see both of you guys here. Both of you here. Uh, this is the kids, and come here, kids. Now you got a few medals around your neck here. Why don't you explain to me what this is all about?
35 years old. He has two boys, one seven and one three. We were there with him Friday. And I assured hope that we and our friends would be praying for them during this time. We are still believing God for a miracle. He is still in the miracle business. I've asked this morning, Brother Sister Scriven, to take this petition to the Lord. I want to ask you to stand with us as you feel inclined to pray. Please join them as they pray today.
here we go again. Now, perchance you have, if you'd like to take an early lunch, I would understand that. You'd be able to get dismissed. But I do recognize and remember all of those that were here on Wednesday night, so would you try to get up? And you're not one of those, I'll let you sit back down. So don't try it early out. But here's the challenge for me. Because I need to put about an hour, hour and a half worth of material into 30 minutes. We'll see if I can do it. I almost done it in the first service. The title of the message today is God's Recipe for Our Victory. I cannot express to you enough how important it is for you and I to obtain the victory. Paul said, thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So you got to get it. But I'm here to tell you, you got to keep it. It's not enough to obtain it. You got to retain it. You got to hang on to it. It's not how high you were yesterday in Christ. So how are you are today in him. And we'll be tomorrow. I want to talk about a recipe for keeping the victory. Now let me just give you a few admonitions from the scripture that kind of refer to us maintaining, retaining the victory. This is the Jesus in Matthew 24 and 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Hebrews 3 and 6, but Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope. Listen to Hebrews again in 4 and 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. Let us hang on to our faith. Help us to not allow it to slip away. Not to allow it to drain from us. Paul said, let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap him. We fail not. Listen to Peter when he wrote the church. He said, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing that you know these things before, beware lest you also be led away with the air of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. I'm not promoting falling. I just want you to realize that it's possible and you've got to do everything you can to retain God's victory in your life. is 
filled with heroes of faith who kept the victory. And now the writer said, look around you. You'll find a cloud of witnesses. Now that speaks to me of inspiration. Of encouragement. And that's the first ingredient in this recipe. Inspiration. Encouragement. Let me, let me tell you this morning. To be discouraged is not to sin. Anybody in the building that's never been discouraged? If perchance you've never been discouraged, don't leave immediately after service. Come up front and just stand by me. Don't say anything, just stand there. I've never got to touch anybody like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, all of us have had times of the discouragement. Times when we've been up, others when we've been down, somewhere at times in between. So to be discouraged is not to sin. But if you stay discouraged, it will lead you to sin. There you, go. you cannot stay down without going under. You've got to get up. to 
Sometimes a song will do it. And then sometimes the singing's over and you're still down. And then somebody shares a testimony and they tell about how God miraculously touched them this last week. Picked them up, helped them, blessed them, encouraged them. And you think, oh God, if you did it for them, you will do it for me. Hallelujah. But then sometimes the testify is over. And then the preacher comes to the pulpit and he preaches. If you had known better, you'd have thought he had been following you around all week. <laughs> I mean, he's climbed your tree and now he's perched on your land. <laughs> but you don't realize he's climbed 20 more trees in that building and perched on 20 of the limbs. And through the word of an eternal God, God is ministering to people and lifting them up. But then there's some time the <coughs> preaching's over and he's done saved and and you study it up. And then as you start to walk out, somebody takes you by the hand. And while they're shaking your hand, they say, Mike, God brought you to my mind last week. And I got to pray it for you. And he wanted me to let you know everything is going to be all Jesus, you've been thinking about me. Glory. You find yourself up. You've got to find inspiration. But if the singing's finished and the testifying's over and the preacher's closed and there ain't nobody shook, then you've got to get along with God. And you've got to do what David did. You've got to encourage yourself in the Lord. you got to get up. You can't stay down. You've got to find inspiration. You talk about inspiration. That 11th chapter of Hebrews is full of it. What if we could call Noah up this morning to testify? Hello, Noah. These folks need a shot of encouragement. So I got it for him. I don't know what to say. Folks, when it looks like nobody's going to help, and it looks like you're going to have to finish the job yourself, don't get discouraged. Because one of these days, you will be on the inside looking out. Hello. I have a shout material right there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, nobody wanted to help Noah. Right. Matter of fact, they made fun of him for that day of But he just kept working on the building. And one day God said, Come in. And he and the family boarded that boat. And she began to rain. That's what he wants you to do. No matter how tough it might seem, gird yourself up. Because I can assure you, the glory will be worth the glory.
to it. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. That's elimination. That means everything down here ain't going up there. That means everybody singing about heaven ain't going to heaven. And you go 
walking down the street and you see something that you boys indulged in and the old man inside of you said, Woo, yeah. You start over that way and that new conscience says, Did you enjoy what happened to you yesterday? <laughs> Whoa, yes I did. Glory. Do you want to keep what happened to you yesterday? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> then you'll have to say goodbye to that then if you want to keep it. Goodbye to that. <laughs>
put your name on his book. But when that happens, right after that, you've got to make up your mind. I've watched people throughout 50 some odd years of ministry come to an altar, and it's strange how so many times I can almost tell by their looks when they leave who made up their mind they were going and who didn't. You got to, you know, I mean, if Daniel had been saved to this altar when he got up, he would have said, God, God put my name down in pen. <laughs> Because you don't have to be erased of mine. I'm coming, Lord, being a God. <laughs> Somebody said, that sounds like arrogance to me. No, it's not arrogance. That's confidence. Yes, yes, yes. Confidence? Whoa. In the power of God to not only save you, but to keep you. <laughs> Can I make up your mind? And if you don't make up your mind, it's only a matter of time, and somebody will knock you off track. Because the devil will see to it that you get bumped. <laughs> if you're a deacon, somebody won't like the way you need. <laughs> and they'll tell you that. If you're a Sunday school superintendent, somebody won't like the way you suit. <laughs> and they'll tell you that. And if you're a singer, somebody won't like the way you sing. And they'll tell you that. And if you're a teacher, somebody will tell you they don't like the way you teach. And they'll tell you about it. And if you're a preacher, somebody won't like the way you preach. And they'll tell you about it. <laughs> but they will. And if you haven't made up your mind, the very first time something hits you crossways, you'll throw in a towel. Say so if that's the way it's going to be, count me out. You've got to make up your mind. Remember the little lady came to the judge and she said, I need your help. Me and this old boy's in a quarrel and he's wrong, dead wrong, but I can't get anybody to say it. And the judge said, look, I'll tell you, let me tell you something. I don't fear God, I don't fear people, and I'm not afraid of you, little woman. I ain't got time for that kind of stuff. That afternoon, same thing. what I tell you, Maybe I need 
lied to him about that time. Self did help him. He said, are you a phony? I said, oh, no, 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 I'm not a phony. I'm doing everything God called me to do. But you know you're not a phony. God knows you're not a phony. What are you worried about?
especially the inspiration and motivation. And I want to do this without trying to try myself being emotional. Uh, but I want many of you who don't have a clue who this woman is. Uh, her name is Vicki. She's been with us a long time. 13 years. She uh, is the, for lack of a better, caretaker of the House of Red House uh, Samaritan. Samaritan Inn. Um, when women don't have a place to go with their kids, they go to that place. When they've been abused and hurt, beat up by men who didn't know how to take care of them, they hide out at times and they run to this place. This last Thanksgiving, which was this last weekend, uh, Vicki cooked for a few women, didn't you? How many? 30 women. Uh, were the kids there too? Do you know how many total? We had um, approximately 35 and some. Okay. Um, and where do you get that food? Then? <laughs>
give me a dollar chart. It's important for us to note right here that Shady is filling up that basket tree. These women are coming and giving the punch to the Lord. If you guys want to start bringing dollars up here, it'd be fine. They're already starting to come up here, so we, we want to make sure that we, we handle that for them. Thank you, Charlie, for that. Uh, Sandy's feet. We're going to say the Lord's uh, Prayer, and you can do it while you're walking up here. Just as well as you can right there, okay? Here we go. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. 